Okie dokie, good morning. Um, we managed to get some footage on the iPhone yesterday because the camera battery died and it was late. So um, we did end up reeling in a, a nice gummy as you would have seen because I would have put the footage in. Um, and yeah, we filleted that up. We ended up getting so much meat off it, which was fantastic. So that's going to save us a lot for shopping this week. Um, this morning we have pretty much packed up. We've just got the rooftop to go. Um, and we hadn't dropped the tire pressures before coming in here. It advises to, but um, we didn't because we thought we'd be okay. This sun is shocking. Well, not shocking, but not good for the camera. Um, we were fine getting to this camp spot, but we want to go right to the tip just to have a look today. And the sand gets pretty soft, so we're just going to drop the tire pressures. Um, go have a look at the tip. Apparently, the colours are beautiful. We can sort of see from where we are here. And I did get some drone footage yesterday of the campsite which I'll pop up um, but yeah it gets really red right at the um, tip up there so we'll go and check that out and get some drone footage of that now the sun's gone away um, yeah some dolphins came in yesterday as well so that was really cool after going to monkey mire and having that experience with the dolphins um, yeah it was almost like the exact same pod which I think it was because it's the same sort of area came right through pretty close in the shallows and just had a bit of a play through the bay so that was really cool to see as well okay our first stop today is Gregory's we were camped at South Gregory's, but this is uh, Gregory's campground and day uh, use area. There's actually a bloody big shed with a barbecue and that in it here. Wow, there's so many rocks here. And this one's four kilometres up from the other one. Four kilometres up from the next one? Oh, yeah. oh from the previous one, yeah. Okay, so our next spot is Bottle Bay. This place actually looks pretty cool. With the red, the white sand, the light blue water. There's a few people fishing here. Oh yeah, you're not allowed to drive past this point. That's cool. This is our second last stop. This is the very tip of this area. It's called Cape Peron, I think you pronounce it. It doesn't look too good. I have to climb down. Taking a different walking track. We don't know where we're going, but we're going to find something cool. Still walking, but we found this bit. Looks pretty cool. It's also pretty steep. Shit, mate, look at all the birds. much here to be honest. I thought it was going to be a nice view or something because it's the very tip but just a lot of dead trees and big red sand dunes. And this be our last stop, Skipjack Point. Again it's just red sand down to the beach with blue water. Very nice. Oh, here's a little path over there where you can go out. There's a change in the watercolour where it gets deep. Here's the path to the lookout with the chair. Might as well go have a gander. Here's the seat. Oh, there's something in the water down there. Oh, it's a shagger. Oh, there's heaps on down there. So there's two lookouts here as well, I just found out. Pretty cool, all different colours. It's a beautiful day. Now this is cool. How pretty is that? I don't know if this is going to pick it up, but there's a shark there. Can't even see the lens to point it out. It's pretty big too. Not huge, but that's better footage. Right there. You can see him right there. a nice 
fast feed. All right, we just got to the entrance of all of the campsites and things right down at the start of the um, national park. So we're just inflating the tires now, um, back up to pressure. But I'm a little bit worried that we're not going to make it to our campsite tonight, which we're staying at Quabba Station um, until about six, seven o'clock, which sucks because um, the stations all along there are really good for fishing. Apparently, so many spots to fish off, um, and yeah, some of the best fishing that you can do on the coast. So. A bit disappointing that we can't get there till that time but we had no idea how far away it was compared to where we are because we had no reception um, and we still have to do shopping so it's Thursday today we normally do our shopping on a Tuesday or a Wednesday so we're a little bit behind luckily Kev got the gummy so we've got some um, meat but yeah there's no major supermarkets until up near Exmouth which is still ages away so it's not like we can go shopping after the station stays um, so yeah Quabba station tonight and then Nalu station tomorrow um, so we need to do shopping, so we're going to stop at Carnarvon, which is about four hours away. The time is one o'clock, so it um, doesn't look like we're going to even get to the shops until five o'clock. Um, and then, yeah, about another hour um, or a bit more out to the station, so stay tuned. Alright, it's been a long time in the car. The time is 4.30 and we've just gotten to Woolworths to do the shopping. So we're going to quickly do that now so that we're not um, any later than we have to be. We still have about an hour and a half to the station as well, so... Rocked up at the Quabba station. We're in camp number seven on that post. But this is great. Fresh chips with real potato. And fresh gummy shark with some salad that's coming. And oh. all this here because I don't know if this picks it up. I'm gonna put my head torch on top, but there's like little green sparkly eyes on the ground. Oh, I really hope this picks up and I thought that it was like some cute little critter and I went up to them and they're actually little like sand huntsmen's and I'm terrified of huntsmen's I'm not scared of snakes I'm not scared of anything else but I am scared of huntsmen's and I know well yeah I don't think that this picks it up but they're just everywhere all over the ground and now I'm absolutely terrified and like just watching where I walk Good morning. The time is 8.30. We've been up for a while. I've been up since about 5.45, 6. Um, Kev's been up since about 6.30. And yeah, not a great sleep last night um, because we are at a beachfront site at Quabba, which is like right on the beach. And the waves were very, very noisy. Um, and there was a tiny bit of wind. Like it probably picked up to like 20 kilometers an hour. So not massive, but like a little bit. And it was flapping the... Um, the rooftop tent a little bit um and not bad but just i had ptsd from the other night so i was just on high alert and couldn't sleep so um anyway ended up getting back to sleep and woke up earlier this morning so um yeah we've packed up we've had brekkie we had bacon and egg rolls this morning they were really yummy um had a coffee and then we have packed up like i said we're gonna have a shower um and then we're gonna make our way up along the coast we're going to do the quabba to nalu drive because we're staying at nalu station tonight so um when we drove into quabba last night it was pitch black so we couldn't get a sign with the um a photo with the king waves kill sign so we'll go back and do that today and then yeah do the drive from quabba to nalu station and hopefully get some land-based fishing in um apparently this stretch of road is really well known for some great land-based fishing you can catch gts massive tunas um spanish mackerel whether we do or not is another story, <laughs> but yeah, apparently you can. Um, a lot of the fishing is cliff faces and you're supposed to have, I don't know what they're called, but it's like these massive, almost like, um, what's it called when you like running up and you jump on the pole and... Pole vault. Oh yeah. Almost like a pole vault type of thing and they must spear the fish or I don't know, do something with it and then they lift it up from the cliffs. We don't have anything like that, so we can't really do any cliff fishing, um, but it, there's plenty of beaches that you can stop along the way and do some fishing from there, so we'll see how we go. All right, we've both just had a shower and the car is packed up. So we're gonna make our way to um, the sign first that say King Waves Kill. Don't know why the sign is so popular for photos, but it's pretty cool. It's a big wooden sign, so we'll go and check that out. Um, and then, yeah, like I said earlier, we'll do the Quabba Tanalu um, Station Road. And then, yeah, they gave us a little map, this one here, which shows like all the different fishing spots and has like, um, various colors of fish that say whether you balloon or bottom fish or spin or bait cast or whatever you do um and all the different spots so 
I think Kev wants to try Red Bluff and see if that's a rock spot we might have to go to um, a beach and try that. But anyway, we'll see how we go. Just pulled up at Red Bluff and Kev's on. I started flicking a lure and there was heaps of coral bed. Well, there is heaps of um, coral down in a big bed down here. And um, Kev goes, do you reckon we should have only got one sinker? And I said, oh, give it a go. Regardless of where we go, if, you, if you're going to lose the sinker, you're going to lose the sinker. And he literally had this in for maybe not even a minute. And he's hooked onto something good. So take your time. Hey. hey? Gone. Really? Yeah. Ah. Uh, nah. 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 Take your time. Wonder what it is. Kev's just reeled in a spangled emperor. That is huge. They look like a black sample. Oh. That is so good. Hold him up. Beautiful. Wow. Must have just been a fluke because we haven't caught anything since. I reckon every time we catch a fish and throw it back, they must go and tell every other fish to fuck off. Because every time we throw one back, we don't get anything. Holly had tiny little um, yellow fin brim. Well, it wasn't tiny, it was probably size, but yeah, we should have really kept that snapper. But we need a big freezer because we got the gummy and then we went shopping yesterday and got a few other things. So run out of freezer space otherwise we would have kept that all right we have just arrived at Nalu station and had to get a photo with the sign it's, it's pretty cool and yeah we're very remote there's not much out here just apart from dirt and dead shrubs and yeah here we go Nalu station right uh, we just rocked up at the three mile camp um and somebody was in our spot but there was a new shiller on this morning and accidentally gave him that camp number. So we gotta wait for them to pack up. So we're just gonna have lunch real quick and yeah, then we'll be able to go down to our night's beach spot and hopefully fish. And we are at the start of the Ningaloo coast. So it goes all the way up from Red Bluff, all the way up and then obviously the main Ningaloo reef at Exmouth. Um, but it starts here. So there's spots you can go snorkeling. Although on wiki camps, it did say there was a croc spotted like three months ago, but I just spoke to the lady and she's like, no, 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 that was because of the cyclone. It shouldn't have been down here, but I am still a bit worried. There's a lot of people snorkeling in the water, um, but yeah, tiger sharks are pretty common in that down here and Kev won't go out with me because he can't swim. So we'll see how I feel. If I'm feeling brave, I'll go out. If I'm Even if I could swim, I'm not going out there. <laughs> I know what's in the water. Even, um, sorry. If I feel brave, I'll go out there. If I don't and there's no one that'll go with me, then I'll stay here. I'll just stick to catching them. It's me just showing off another great sunset. Look at beautiful leaves. Got a bag of firewood. Stocked up on a few more cans. It just gets better and better. Absolutely unreal. Also another night of fish and chips. Kev's making hand cut chips. I did some beer batter and more chips on. And we'll have some gummy shark and then there'll be a little bit left for tomorrow night as well. On it. What a beautiful night's nice sleep that was. Such a calm night last night and it was actually really I wasn't hot but it was it was warm. I stayed up a fair bit in front of the fire, I even fell asleep in front of the fire. Um, we're not quite sure where we're going, we need to get reception so that we can see what's up the road. But yeah. Alright, we're driving currently from the Nalu station to Coral Bay and we've just got to our first little gate. So you can only have four wheel drives past this point, it's like a four wheel drive only truck. Um, and yeah, apparently you have to stay on the track and not veer off it because there's quicksand. Ooh. And some French tourists went in it the other day. And, um, sorry, it's probably a bit noisy. Some French tourists went in the other day and got stuck for a few days. Um, and the police and that had to come and get them out and everything. But apparently they just had a BMW, so that's probably why. Anyway, I'll hook this gate back up. Sorry, probably getting flung everywhere. And we'll continue. Truck 
gets a bit steep so we thought we'd film it. We've made it to our camp tonight. Um, we've just gone further forward from our campsite. All of the beachfront ones were booked, so we had to go a little bit further back, but you can still come down here and park your car. So we've parked our car here and we're gonna have something to eat and then we're gonna go try fish on the beach and see. Righto, not a lot of fishing happened. We um, decided to have lunch and then we ended up just laying down for a bit because it was very hot in the sun and there was not much cloud coverage. But we just went out then for probably, I don't know, half an hour, an hour, maybe max. And there's just a lot of weed there. Um, Holly caught one fish, I don't know what it is though, it was like greeny, yellowy colour with stripes all over it. Uh, we took a photo and I didn't have my phone so I couldn't fish ID it. But we're going to go and head back to camp and probably just set up and relax and cook the other fish that I got. We're also going to go back and have a cold shower because... Holly was not dealing with the flies and she cracked the absolute shits and then she started getting angry with me so I got angry back at her and then she decided to throw sand at me so then I proceeded to tackle her into the sand um, and yeah then we were splashing water at each other but we're, we're in love, we're still okay. Good morning, time is quarter past nine this morning, um, we had a bit of a sleep in, we wake up at about eight o'clock. Um, overnight it was good. It was pretty warm, so we just had the whole rooftop open, but we're at a campground with a few other caravans, so it felt safe enough. Um, went and had a little bit of a fish yesterday. I think I've already said that. I just got a cod and that was it. And it was only like maybe 25, 30 centimeters max. So, um, he went back and today we're only moving not far up, um, the coast. We've got a couple of campgrounds pretty in pretty close proximity to each other for the next couple of days. Um, so yeah we stayed at a place called black cliffs campground um last night which is not even cliffs it's literally just like sandy banks as you can see um and tonight we're staying at a place called maggie's which is literally oh, i'd be like 15 20 kilometers up so um not too far and then the next day we're staying at south lefroy um i couldn't book north i think that's the right way around um, I couldn't book North Lefroy, it was already booked out. They're pretty popular on the Ningaloo coast. So I've got South Lefroy and then we're staying at a place called Point Billy for two days, which is also on the Ningaloo coast. Um, we have really choppy reception here as well. So I tried to have a bit of a Google yesterday um, about the whale shark tours. I hadn't previous, previously booked one because I just didn't know when we we're going to be up here. You don't know if your car's going to break or if something's going to happen. And it's a lot of money to book something and then not be able to make it. I'm sure they'd refund you. But anyway, um... They're $550 per person to go swimming with whale sharks and a lot of it's booked out. I think there was a few spots left, but to be honest, I just can't fathom $550 to go swimming with them when if you owned your own fishing boat, you could literally go, these flies are shocking, um, you could literally go for free and just jump in the water if you saw one. So I sort of want to, I sort of don't, I sort of just think I'll just snorkel myself, but then the thought of the tiger sharks and that that are around the area sort of scare me if I'm by myself. So... I'm sort of in a catch-22. I don't want to miss out, but I am by myself because Kev won't go in. So, um, yeah, we'll just see. I think we'll just go up to Exmouth and see what's available and maybe do something that we can both enjoy. We did say that we wanted to do a fishing charter in Exmouth, one in um, Northern Territory and one in Queensland as well, just in the top ends because there's fish that we don't get back at home. Um, but the fishing charters in Exmouth that we've seen are only available if you hire the whole boat, which is like two and a half grand. So... There's that as well. Um, so I think the plan is just to sort of head up there, enjoy the days going along the coast and then sort of chat about it when it comes closer. But yeah, that's our plan for today. We're gonna head up there now. There's a couple of gates along this track that you got a cave opening and shutting. Okay, on our way to that campsite, we've come across a whale lookout called uh, Wedding Hill. The track ends a bit soft, but it's not too bad. You can see heaps from up here. We did see uh, some whales yesterday on another hill we parked at, but we couldn't exactly get good photos of them. And it was hard to keep following them. Yeah, we got some, but it, I don't think it's much. 
Didn't see any whales, so it's back to our campsite. Hello from a very sunburnt me. I got burnt today. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and I think it was from the wind, not even the sun. It was 32 degrees say and it was bloody hot, but it was also a little bit windy, so I think I got wind burn more than anything. But the sun is setting. We haven't filmed much today, but we haven't really done much to be fair. We went for a little bit of a fish before and I caught two rock cod on the same line. <laughs> so um, they weren't very big. They're only the same thing, like probably 25 centimeters or so, but yeah, two on the same line, which was pretty cool. Chuck them back out and we might go again later with the surfy and um, my tailor that I caught a couple of weeks ago. We might try that for bait. Um, went for a tiny bit of a snorkel today, if you could ever call it that. It was only in shallow water and um, the water, even though it looks really clear, it was a little bit cloudy underneath and you couldn't really see much. There was a few couples going right out snorkeling, but I don't have flippers and I'm not really confident going right out by myself. So I just stayed within the shallow reefs and yeah, didn't really see much. So I did have my GoPro with me, but didn't film anything because yeah, there wasn't really much to see. So just cooking dinner. We are cooking burgers and for obvious reasons, I am still in my bathers, which is a one piece, no pants. Uh, and Kev's cooking the burgers because I do not want to get any more burger sauce on any more pants. Morning. We ended up going fishing last night. Um, we just ended up having dinner and having a cup of cocoa, and then we went to bed and just watched a couple of movies we had downloaded. Um, today we are trying to escape these freaking flies. We're heading to Coral Bay. Um, apparently, there's a saw in that there. We need a couple things, so we're gonna stop in there and then head to our camp. We didn't know if there's much to see there, so. I guess we'll see you once we get there. How is the size of this ant mound? It's literally nearly as tall as my car. All right, we made it about 20 minutes up the road and I found a little spot called Five Fingers, which is apparently really great snorkeling. I don't know how far out you have to go from the reef, um, but the road to get up here is extremely soft and we got stuck sort of halfway up here. So we've dropped, or we're dropping the tire pressures now because we didn't have those dropped and the sand's just super soft. Kev seems to reckon that we still won't get up with the tire pressures dropped. We'll just see how we go, but yeah, currently dropping them and we'll keep you updated. All right, we've illegally gotten into Five Fingers. It's not illegal. There's oh, bullshit. Four other cars here. There's other cars here, but it doesn't mean it's the right thing. There's all trained on the fence that people have run over, and there's been rocks that have moved off the track, so. All right, some flies have gotten in the car. We've arrived. It was pretty gnarly for driving up the sand dunes. It was um, very soft, but we got there. It was fine. So, yeah, we have arrived. Beautiful, nice and clear, and coral everywhere. Um, I just stood right there on the water and it gets quite deep straight away there. Um, there is someone out there snorkeling. Um, and I'm so, I feel like I'm in a catch 22 because I really want to go out and see the stuff. And it's really shit because I feel like I probably can't because the rip is a little bit strong out further and you can see the waves curling and I'm not the strongest swimmer. I can swim, but I'm not the strongest swimmer and I don't have flippers. And Kev offered to get me flippers for my birthday a few months ago. And I said no, because they're expensive and I didn't feel like I'd use them all the time. And I still don't feel like I'd use them all the time, but they definitely help in strong currents just to stay where you are and to swim where you want to swim. Um, and yesterday when I was out in the water, we only went out, oh, probably no more than five to 10 meters. And um, even then, like I was practicing swimming, like trying to go forward and it was really hard for me to move in the water with no flippers. So yes, I'm gonna catch 22, but I think I will stay in the car as shit as that is and hopefully see. Apparently when you get up to Exmouth, you can literally like walk right there and snorkel, which you can here too. So I don't know. Anyway, I'm feeling a bit shitty cause I really want to do it, but I just don't, don't know. Well, look at her go, eh? Good on her. Even if I could swim, I couldn't do that. Look at that. I'm too scared of all the fish and all the other things that are in the ocean. There's so many things in the ocean that can actually kill you, besides the water. All right, so I did end up going snorkeling. Not very far out, but I just worked up the courage to go and do it and then a lady stopped me and was like, just be careful walking in the shallows, there's stingrays all under your feet and you don't see them, they just swim off. And I was like, great. 
so I was like oh do I go out and then she's like just jump in the water as soon as you can like and start snorkeling so I did and yeah the current was quite strong and it sort of pulled you to the side a bit but I just tried not to go any further than I could stand so I went out as far as I could stand and yeah there was a few little garfish and things swimming around I got some fish on the GoPro but not like the photos it wasn't like the Great Barrier Reef or anything like it had shown in the photos um because I didn't go out far enough but that's all right still went out just on our way to our camp we come across these beauties so good looking We just got to South Lefroy. It took two hours from where we were, so a bit of a hike. Um, and we're going to have to go back that way in the morning very early. Why, Kev? Because we booked a fishing charter. Did you hear that? We are going fishing. We were told the Exmouth is the best spot to go fishing. And even though um, we're not going in Exmouth directly, we're just going in Coral Bay, which isn't too far away at all. Um, and it was... A fraction of the cost compared to the other charters and it seemed like they seem really genuine um, they had a great a range of photos of species that they've caught and everything before so um, yeah super excited we're going on a full day nine hour it is reef fishing and game fishing so we might get to do some trolling um, and yeah we'll see how we go so full day we've got to be there at 6 30 in the morning um, which means we'll have to leave here at 4 30 and Ooh. we'll be back at about four o'clock in the afternoon or half past four and which means we'll be back because we're camping up this way again it means we'll be back here by I reckon like seven seven eight o'clock tomorrow so it'll be a late one tomorrow but hopefully all worthwhile and hopefully we get some big stonkers all right I don't know if you can see us but the time is four o'clock we got up at ten to four before our alarms I couldn't sleep I was too excited and Kev reckons he had a shit sleep too um but we're up we feel like absolute assholes because it's literally so early and the camp is like packed really closely together and um yeah we did tell the people around us that we were leaving early but you still feel bad um so we're just crawling out of here and we haven't even shut the doors properly because we didn't want to make a loud bang so we'll just stop down the road and shut them but we've got about a two hour trip back um which gives us just enough time to quickly make some lunch for the boat go to the toilet if we need to go to the toilet have a coffee and yeah then we're off all right i don't think you can see at all but the time is 5.42. It's taken us just under two hours to get back, which is good time. Um, and we need to be here at 6.30. So we've got about 50 minutes, which is good because we still need to pack lunches, make sure that the car is packed away because it'll be out in the heat. So make sure all like the cameras and stuff that we're not taking are put away. Um, and yeah, we'll just chill for a bit until it's time to go. We're just having our brekkie in the car park and have a look at this sunrise. That's one of the prettiest sunrises I've ever seen. Incredible. So cool. Okay, so it's dark again. I'm going to try and use my phone light. It is 8 o'clock and we just got to camp tonight. We obviously didn't take this on the fishing charter. Um, so we didn't have much footage um, from the day. I caught a couple of fish. I got some goldies and what else did I get? I got a perch. Um, and just, I think I've got a red throat as well. There's a few different species of fish that I got. Um, anyway, unfortunately, Kev got seasick an hour into our nine hour trip and just spent the whole time vomiting over the side of the boat. So he didn't get to fish at all. Um, and yeah, which was a little bit disappointing because it wasn't cheap. Um, it wasn't the most expensive thing compared to other fishing charters we've been quoted on, but it was not cheap. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it. So he did have seasickness tablets. They just didn't help. Um, the swell was massive. They said even the skipper and everyone was saying that it was a, a pretty rough day. So pardon me. Yeah, the boat was 55 foot and it was just going side to side. Like literally there were some points <laughs> where people were nearly like falling to the other side. So it was pretty rough um, out there. So a bit shit that Kev didn't get any fish. And obviously, yeah, there's not much you can do about it. But yeah, that was our day. A little bit disappointing, but. It is what it is. I forgot to mention too that we have pulled up at Yardy Creek Rest Area, or like it's a caravan park. Um, I did originally pay for Point Billy, um, which was going to be the same time. I think it was, I'm trying to use this for that, which was like two hours away and this took two hours, but we wanted to still visit Exmouth. Um, we were at Coral Bay before. So um, we've come up here. That way we can explore Exmouth tomorrow and then head up. But I don't know if you can see, like 
I am incredibly tired. We have been up since 3.30 this morning. We've been out, well, I've been out on the boat in the sun all day. Kev's slept for all the other times in between his vomits. So um, I'm incredibly tired. I'm going to go have a shower, make use of that, and then have something to eat and go to bed. Good morning. We stayed at a Yardy Creek uh, campground or caravan park. It's freaking massive. There's heaps of um, tents in there. There must be like school camps because there's these massive darchy tents all set up and yeah Holly's feeding Galahs they're, they're super cute. close but we made breakfast and we figured while we got all the kitchen stuff out we'd um, cut up the fish fillets because they're way too big for us to eat in one night once she's finished feeding the birds I'll show you the size of them that's one fish fillet that's we had two of those fillet. and look how thick they are it's pretty thick, yeah. Well, there's a knife next to it. You can sort of see the thickness of it. Yeah, um, yeah we've also got a rosy. Which Rosie's in the freezer I think already. Is the perch? I don't know. It's a bit confusing, but anyway. Um, yeah, we've got that in the freezer already. I didn't like section and cut that off because it was a much smaller fish. So I think if I pull that out of the freezer, it'd be fine for a couple of days to eat it. Whereas this is going to take a lot longer. So I've got to break it up into sections, which I'm doing now. So yeah, this is the gold band snapper. Or goldie, they call them. They're quite a nice looking fish. Even the fillets look good. Looks very similar to bloody the gummy, just not as white. It's a bit more pink. This is a bit more pink yeah, and orange. See how it goes. You coming back for seconds? You haven't had one. I oh, know you flew off, you might have already had one. I oh, know, you all look the same. Take it easy, mate. Here, bud. You're a sharp little beast, don't you? Oh, what about the last one? He already had some. He's still eating it. Oh, good hello, hello. Uh, we're packed up and the plan is to head from where we are here in Yardy Creek to the town of Exmouth. Um, we're going to do some washing. We need to do our washing. And we're not sure if there's any major supermarkets or like main supermarkets um, from here up to the Kimberleys or even that sort of region. So um, the plan is, yeah, just to go to Exmouth do what we need to do there and just have a sit and a think whether it is worth getting some extra groceries just for the coming days um, if we don't have access to supermarkets up there because um, it might work out cheaper in the long run um, and yeah just give ourselves a bit of a plan on where we're going and what we're doing um, over the next coming days slash weeks okay I don't know if Holly's told you our plan today but we have to go to the laundromat and I think near the laundromat there's also a car wash and the car is putrid at the moment. There's been that many moss just peppering it when we are driving at night. Um, so we're going to go and do that. On, on the way back into the main town we found a shipwreck which apparently you can catch good queen fish at. So we're going to go have a look at the shipwreck regardless before we take the rods out. And we're going to see what it's like and whether or not we can actually be bothered fishing. And, and we need to use the pilchards because of that fish that we got yesterday. We oh, gave yeah. some to our neighbour at the caravan park because we had too much to fit in the freezer. But even then it's like chockers, so we need to use the pilchard. Yeah. So hopefully we can fish and get yeah, some. Yeah, hopefully. It looks like there's some monster queenies or, or double spots, whatever WA people call them. It's currently high tide, so you can't see much of the shit wreck, but it is just there. Yeah, somewhere. So you can see bits of it. Apparently in low tide you can see a lot of it. There is turtles here too, we saw heaps of turtles in the water. Like you can see them curling up in the waves. Oh yeah, there's one preaching right there. There's a gone there. Alright, I hooked one first cast and it came off. But Kev's on now. And we've got good head knocks. Don't know if it's a queenie. We've never caught one before so don't know what they feel like. But does it feel good? Take your time. Yeah, look at that bend in the rod. <laughs> yes. Right there. there he is. Bring him in, bring him in. Bring him in with the wave. Go, yep. Up, 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 up. With the... Oh, no. All right, wait for the wave. Wait for the wave. And then bring him in. Yeah, that's a queenie. You can tell by the colour. Only a little tacker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right up. Yeah, good job! Woohoo! I reckon we must have just caught the same one I just released. Because it just swirled straight back out and Ollie's on. 
I reckon it's another queenie too because it ran like a fuck. Oh, no. Parrotfish. Yeah, they're apparently really good eating. Nice. It's beautiful, isn't it? Holly saw some dugons, but she tried pointing them out to me, and I'm hopeless with that stuff. I couldn't see it. All I could see was waves. Um, but yeah, we only really managed to catch that donkey of a uh, queen fish or double spot, whatever they call them here and Holly got the nice beautiful parrotfish. It was just 35 centimetres, so it was five centimetres off our um, qualifying yeah. target. Washing is on. How convenient is that? The laundry mat is right there. And we are washing this filthy pig. It's not too bad, it's just getting a bit out of control and I don't like it getting out of control, so wash on. Just a nice little bit of street art on the way in to collect our washing. How cool is that? Okay, I got burnt today very badly and I'm very sore. <laughs> but anyway, you get that on the big jobs and we got a queenie for it so it's all worthwhile. Anyway, we are leaving Exmouth now and we are heading down to just a free camp called Termite Nest Pullover. Hopefully there's no termites. But we're just going to stop there. Apparently there's Wi-Fi, well not Wi-Fi, sorry, service. And it's quite a nice little 24-hour stop. So we'll go there and then tomorrow start heading um, and making our way up towards the Kimberleys. So um, we were supposed to stay in Pilbara for two nights, but we'll see how we go. We're just sort of playing it by ear on where we are at what time. There are a couple of things booked that we need to obviously make it to. Um, but apart from that, it's a clean slate towards the Kimberleys. So, yeah. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of another episode. Obviously, if you like our content, please give us a like, share, and subscribe. Hoorah!